Hey everyone! Today I wanted to do a little bit of a different format for my DIY video. I guess I've sort of done these before. Basically I'm going to walk you guys through a project that I did recently. I'll still have like the materials list and stuff, but I'll put that down below in the description box rather than having it on screen. You guys have probably seen here and there where I do projects using leather. I actually still have a lot of that leather still in my closet. Um, I basically have a big roll. I bought it like a while ago and I've just been doing like small projects here and there, but I never like had the correct tools. If you've watched any of those and you've seen me like burnish the edges, I'm always like making my own little burnishing tool and just using my spit to spit burnish it instead of using, instead of using like the gum tragacanth stuff or whatever, however you pronounce it. Well, I finally decided to go buy a cheap little kit. I didn't want to spend too much money on it because if I didn't like it, then I would rather only spend like 30 or 40 bucks on a kit rather than like hundreds of dollars. I figured I could update my tools as they break or whatever. So today I'm going to walk you guys through my first project using that kit. We have this key fob for one of our vehicles. It broke. The little part where the keychain goes into snapped off. So I thought that I would try my hand at making a little leather cover for it so that we could attach it to our keychain again. So anyway, let's get started. Here's the broken key fob. I broke off the rest of the remaining like little loop that broke and then I sanded them down to get them out of the way. I popped it open and took the battery out. I'm going to be handling this thing a lot and I didn't want to press the buttons and accidentally set the car off a bunch of times. This knife? Oh, I made it. Like, I forged it. Like, I hammered hot metal to shape it. Last month, I went to a maker conference and they had people there teaching how to forge metal. Uh, they also had welding and like woodworking stuff, but I ended up doing a lot of forging, which turned out to be a lot of fun. Sadly, I wasn't able to finish the knife though. The handle needs to be shaped more and glued together and then the blade needs to be sharpened. So I was thinking about doing that in a future video maybe. I also kind of want to make a sheath for it as well. So we'll see. Anyway, once I popped the key fob open, I removed the battery and then I put it back together and covered it with saran wrap. I cut two pieces of leather that would fit around the key fob and then some. It's impossible to add leather back but you can always cut extra off, so I lean towards having a lot of extra. Then I soak the leather pieces in some water for about 30 minutes. I took them out, blotted them off, and then started forming them around the key fob. When I started being able to see the shape of the key fob, I cut the leather a bit on one side, cutting it close enough that I could fit my little binder clips on, and then I added a binder clip. Then I cut back the other side and then added another clip, then another side and another clip, and then one last time for the last side. Then I cut the corners back a bit and proceeded to add clips all the way around the edge. Then I let this dry overnight. So these clips I used ended up bleeding black onto the leather, which sucks, because my original plan was to keep the leather as is and let it weather on its own, but now I had to stain it. Before taking these pieces apart, I lightly marked which side will be the front with my nail. I tried to mark approximately where I'm going to be cutting the leather out anyway, so this mark won't be on the finished piece. I used a leather hole punch to, you guessed it, punch a hole in the leather. I positioned it to be pretty much where the original keychain would have gone. To cut a hole on the other side, I put the two pieces together and then used the first piece to help me line up where the hole needed to go on the second piece. I wanted to be able to remove the key fob if we needed to change the batteries or whatever, so a little less than halfway down from the hole side, I cut off the extra leather keeping just enough to go around the punched holes. To figure out what I needed to cut out for the button window, I made a rubbing of the key fob and then I traced around where the buttons are. Then I cut that out. To make sure I cut the little window out in the right spot on the leather, 
I put the tiniest amount of rubber cement on the key fob and stuck the paper template to it. And then I put a bigger smear of rubber cement on the paper and then I stuck the key fob into the side of the leather that I had marked earlier. When I pulled the key fob out, the paper stayed in place and I was able to trace it and then cut it out. This worked pretty well. I used the X-Acto knife to bevel the edges of the cut leather and then I sanded these edges. And look at that. I finally got myself some of that gum tragacanth stuff. So I don't need to spit burnish anymore. I applied the gum to the edges to be burnished and then I burnished them. It was a little tough because this thing was so small and it had a lot of tight corners, but I made it work. And now I used these leather stitch hole punches to make the holes for stitching onto one half of the holder. Then I applied contact cement to both sides on the edges and let those set up for about 15 minutes. To help make sure it was positioned correctly, I put the leather cover pieces together around the key fob. I don't think this was really necessary, but I was about to go take a break to eat dinner, so I used the binder clips to hold the pieces together to make sure that they were bonded really well. Yes, I'm using the same clips that stained it. It's already stained, so why not just keep using them? When I was done enjoying dinner, it was time to punch the holes all the way through. So when I've seen other people do this technique, they used an awl and made it look so freaking easy, but for me, it was not so much. I was getting very frustrated, so frustrated that I wasn't paying attention to where my hands were, so I'm blocking a lot of the shots. Sorry. I mean, it didn't work anyway, so... Since I was having so much trouble with that, I decided to cheat a little bit and use my flex shaft and a tiny drill bit to just drill the dang holes out. And it worked beautifully. On to the stitching, I used a waxed thread and went with the normal saddle stitch for this. This is where you have needles on both ends of the thread, you thread it through about halfway, and then you thread through the next stitch with one needle on one side, and then thread through that same hole on the other side with the other needle and you just keep repeating that all the way around. I'm using a curved needle on one side simply because it was a needle that was within arm's reach of me. And this happened on the first stitch. I broke it. In fact, I broke a couple needles doing this, but this one was at least usable all the way through. I ended up having to use some pliers to help pull the needles through. When I reached the end, to secure the stitches, I backstitched three stitches and then cut off the excess. I didn't bother tying a knot or anything. When I was researching this stuff, people said that at least three backstitches would be enough. So I guess we'll see. I used the pointy end of my burnishing tool to press down the stitches to make it lay flatter. I thought this gave it a more finished look. And then with my X-Acto knife, I carefully cut off the excess leather around the stitches. Then I went around and beveled the edges, sanded, applied the gum stuff, and finally burnished this edge. I wish I could have been done here, but I still had to stain it because of the discoloration left from the binder clips. I removed the key fob, which was easier than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. Once I had stitched it in, I sort of panicked, thinking that it was going to be stuck in here forever and I wouldn't be able to take it out and put the battery in or stain the leather, but anyway, before I forgot, I popped it open and stuck the battery back in and then I set it aside while I dyed this thing. So since the discoloration was black, I wanted to stain it black. My problem was that I don't have any black dye. I have had luck using India ink as leather dye before, so for my plan B, I was going to do that. But guess what? I had moved all of my India inks to the new studio, and I was running out of time with this project, so I had to go to plan C, an alcohol-based marker. 
I'm not sure how long this will last. I mean, I've used alcohol-based markers to color leather before, but I don't know. I just have a feeling that this is going to wear off pretty quickly. But maybe by then I can redo the dye properly. Or, I mean, I can just remake this whole thing. Anyway, I pretty much just colored all over with this thing with my marker. And in an attempt to keep this black marker on as long as possible, I used some resoline to finish this piece off. I used one of these like puff stain ball things to apply the resoline, which I would not recommend. The fibers on the puff came off all over the cover as I spread the resoline on. Oops. Anyway, once this thing was dry, I popped the key fob back in and threaded it onto my carabiner. And actually, I think dyeing it black ended up being a happy accident. It looks pretty nice. I attached it to my keys and it's as good as new. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. You can follow me on any of my social media, which will be linked down below. The materials list will be down below, along with some affiliate links if you guys are interested in picking up any of the things from this project. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.